This is a fast tour of Gremlin, graph programming language. Let's go ahead and start with Gremlin using the shell script, .sh. Uh, it's loading, you're waiting, and bam, once the prompt comes up, you're ready to go. Basically, you can type in commands. Um, anything that's groovy um, is allowed. Uh, Gremlin's basically a wrapper to groovy. Um, so groovy Java is the language that you are working with. However, Gremlin uh, provides a lot of nice constructs for traversing graphs. So let's go ahead and create, uh, open up a graph. This is one that we already have on our computer. Neo so it's a Neo4j graph. There it is. Let's look at all, all the vertices. Vertices are nodes or dots in the graph. Whoop. Let's go ahead and look at all the edges. Edges are links or relationships or lines in the graph. Whoop. Um, so this particular graph is the Grateful Dead graph. Grateful Dead is an American band. Um, vertices represent songs, singers, um, and uh, songwriters. And edges represent whether a song was followed by another song in concert, was sung by a particular singer, or was written by a particular songwriter. Um, let's go ahead and get um, um, a particular vertex. And uh, we want a vertex where its name is Dark Star, which is a famous Grateful Dead song. So we've hit the index, and now it returns us a vertex that has a property named dark star. Let's go ahead and set that vertex, that vertex to the value v. Um, that pop off one notation just says uh, grab from the from the index that one, or actually it's a grab pop off the next thing in the iter iterator um, because the index hit returns an iterator. Anyways, so now we're at v, and now we can look at the properties on that particular vertex. The name is dark star. It's an original song performed 219 times, so forth and so on. Um, let's go ahead and get the outgoing edges from that vertex. So these are edges that are emanating from the vertex. Um, so this vertex um, is followed by many other songs. Let's go ahead and see who sung this song. So if we go, we want to filter to those sung by edges. And get the incoming vertex. The incoming vertex is the vertex on the tail of that edge. Well, let's do it first with just the label sung by. So now we filter to that particular set of edges. There's only one edge. Get the incoming vertex, which is going to be vertex 9. And let's look at the name. Um, of, of the person who sings the song, and the name of the person who sings the song is Garcia, that's Jerry Garcia. Um, let's do something else. Let's go ahead and um, look at what songs are followed by that song. So what songs follow uh, Dark Star in concert? There's a whole bunch of followed by edges. Let's get the incoming vertices. Here's the vertices. Let's get the names of those songs. Here's the songs that follow them. Um, and let's go ahead and get the path that took us to get there. So let's look at the bottom one. It basically says that we started at vertex 165, and then we went took a followed by edge, and then we got arrived at vertex 84, and then we arrived at the string representation of the name of that particular song. So we can get the pass, the transformational pass through the graph that we took. Let's just go ahead and get the names again. Again, Morning Dew is the last one. Um, let's do this. Let's go ahead and look at. Um, let's go ahead and try and figure out all the songs that follow Dark Star which we have right now, which are these, that are sung that are sung by Jerry Garcia. What this returns is Garcia, because we've taken a path from Dark Star all the way to Garcia according to followed by and sung by relationships. But what we want to know is what those songs were that got us along those paths. So what we want to do is go back one, two, three, four steps to the incoming vertices from the followed by edges. And these are the songs that follow Dark Star that are sung by Jerry Garcia. And we can do something like this and get the paths. Let's go ahead and do, um, let's go ahead and show some uh, uh, ranking characteristics. Let's create an empty map. Uh, that's map notation in Groovy. Let's go ahead and get the outgoing edges. Um, and the incoming vertices uh, from Dark Star. There they are right there. Let's go ahead and index these into the map that we just created. And what we mean by index them is how many group count groups, um, the keys of the, the map are the, are the vertices, and then the, and the, and the, the values are the, the amount of times that they were encountered um, along that traversal. Well, in this particular example, we've only emanated one step, so we're only going to see um, these vertices one time. But let's go ahead and show a more complicated example using looping. So if we get the vertex, get the outgoing edges, get the incoming vertices, let's go ahead and loop. The notation for loop is loop um, two in this, in this context. Get the incoming vertex and then take that vertex and, and put it back two steps before, which is into the out E pipe. 
So we're going to keep looping on out E in V. And how many times are we going to do that? We're going to do it while the amount of times we've looped is less than four. So we're going to do three, um, three iterations of looping. And we're, there's us looping all those vertices. What we forgot to do is uh, go ahead and in, increment the group count for uh, so we can figure out how many times we've touched these things. So let's now loop. Now we need to loop back three times. It loops, and we're gonna go ahead and loop for four times. And there it goes. And if we look at the map, we see we have a bunch of different uh, counts. Let's go ahead and sort this map using Groovy shorthand notation for sorting a map. And a dot value, uh, ba -ba b dot value. This is a reverse ordering, and then we can see that vertex twenty four was uh, touched 1047 times. What is vertex 24? If we want to see it like that, we can just grab the vertex by its ID and then get its name. And that's playing in the band. Playing in the band is a very popular Grateful Dead song. But the hash map had a bunch of, has the songs by their vertices. What's more important and what we'd like to know is more human readable representation. Let's go ahead and get um, the songs by their names. So let's do the same thing we did. Out, let's go ahead and first clear the map and show this example. Let's go ahead and do um, v dot out e dot in e and then name and then we're going to index into the map the names. But now we can't loop on the name because that we can't get the outgoing edges of a name. So we need to go back two steps to the actual vertex and then we need to loop and we need to loop back three steps according to that representation and we're going to do it loops and we're going to do it for less than four again and we're going to let this go and here are all the results we look at m now it's indexed by name and we can sort the values and then we see playing in the band jack jack straw trucking me my uncle promised land show so forth and so on are the most popular songs according to the followed by graph and if you know anything about the grateful dead um this basically looks uh, the top ranked songs look like a greatest hits album um let's do something that's very interesting um, if we do uh, v dot out e dot in v, this is the um, songs that are connected to uh, uh, Dark Star. Let's do let's print what this thing is. What this thing is is a pipe, and you can see the underlying pipe representation. If you go to http uh, pipes dot tinkerpop dot com, this is what Gremlin ultimately compiles down to. And so we can kind of we can start to see. What the what the abstract syntax or the the, the underlying compilation process is uh, for any pipeline. And you can see how everything loops and how all the different pipes wrap each other. So it's very interesting to do that to understand how back and loop work. All right, and so I guess we're done with here. We're still back at our vertex, um, dark star, and be sure to shut down your graph before you finish. Um, so Neo4j shuts down properly, and let's go ahead and quit. Thank you.